Okay, this is the between uh, long play test number five. I want to start by doing some housekeeping and then we will do session recap uh, or threat recap and then we'll continue a night phase. We're in the middle of a night phase last time, so that will be fun. I think we have a lot of like cliffhanger things to resolve. So let's talk about uh, conditions first, though. Uh, Mr. Burns, what are your conditions right now? I am angry and still tainted. Right. Dr. Wright. I'm, I think I'm just tainted. Okay. And Ms. White. Just unnerved. Okay. Marcus. I'm shocked, terrified, and disturbed. <laughs> I like how all three of those are kind of just like the same thing. I think it just represents three degrees of like genuine horror, right? So, um, good. All right, then. Um, good. Let's talk about threats. So we have three active threats. Um, we have the face taker, uh, the fey, that is the newly renamed stolen babies threat. Um, it is a fey threat. And we have... Um, uh, in brackets, fish creature threat. So um, that is what we're doing there. Uh, the face taker. So uh, this is just, these are like the real basics of what happened last time. And we're also kind of in the middle of stuff. But the dapper boy uh, showed up on the doorstep of Hargrave House and delivered a package to Mr. Burns, the second package Mr. Burns has received uh, in <laughs> as many days delivered a package to Mr. Burns um, that contained the face of the actress. Um, so that's a thing going on. Uh, meanwhile, in another part of town, Ms. White and Dr. Wright, they are presently face-to-face -face with the killer um, and uh, at the warehouse where a fantastic exhibit was supposed to be taking place. Um, we had a sort of, um, you know, we had like this sort of alternate timeline uh, Janice Mask uh, thing where it was insinuated that Dr. Wright might become intrigued by the work of the face taker, but the Janice Mask has obviated that. And so now you're just kind of awkwardly staring at uh, the killer. So we will pick up on that for sure. Uh, the other threat, the Fae, uh, Marcus went to the house of this young couple, the Milners, whose baby was taken. Uh, father of the baby uh, reveals joyously that his son was returned. Uh, Marcus is presently at this moment walking into the nursery, which is filled with purple light and a very strange woodland scene. I don't think anything else happened beyond that, right? You were just kind of creeping in. Yeah, that's what I thought. And finally, the fish creature threat. Professor, A Professor Bird Thistle sent a package and letter to Mr. Burns. The package contained a large fin-like appendage, uh, which had been torn off by a young man who was uh, accosted by some creature. Um, he and his girlfriend had been walking along a boardwalk enjoying a date night. When uh, this thing attacked him, he managed to chase it off. Mr. Burns is presently in a cab with a waterlogged ghost woman. So uh, that is a thing going on right now. So we have a lot of balls in the air. Um, and so that's uh, great. Uh, da, 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 da. Why don't we do, uh, we'll do beginning of session moves. Uh, we'll just do it after we wrap up this night phase. Then we'll do that. So uh, for, for night work. Um, any questions about the threats or anything I missed? Okie doke. Then I think we will go, if you guys will go to the folder and pull up the overseen document, we will continue with our night phase. And we were doing, uh, we were doing the bitter end, if I remember correctly. And we're on Sally, uh, another Sally, a different Sally, whose three children live with her in the brothel. We're gonna paint the scene. What do we see that shows how Sally has tried to create a normal life for her children here? And I'll remind you that we're trying to incorporate details and elements and themes between the main scene and the scene. I think we see, you know, that she's 
put a curtain along the way there and we can just see behind it like toys in a small desk off to the side back there. Nice. Um, I think uh, from the outside of her room, the the window has like has like a, a a permanent fire escape slash stairway going up to it, and it's sort of been turned into uh, more of a door so that the children can come like in and out of the apartment without going through the entire brothel. I think maybe there's a chore list for everybody set up too with the the kids' names and them. And I think when you see one of the kids, uh, a, a young boy running in through like the door, uh, uh, you could see like he has a lot of patches on his clothes, but that they are all very um, carefully sewn. Let's begin with, what do I want to begin? Why don't we begin with, Mr. Burns. So you're in this handsome cab. The driver seemed to insinuate that he knew he had a passenger, but certainly the driver doesn't realize that his passenger is uh, a, a waterlogged ghost. Um, perhaps he's ensorcelled or something, who knows? Uh, we could leave it up in the air, it's not super important. But you're in this cab and you're sitting next to this woman. Her skin is, is, is pale. Um, almost like sort of fish belly white. Uh, she has bits of kelp and seaweed hanging from um, from her uh, from her shoulders, from her clothing, uh, which is wet and matted to her body. And her hair is just sort of like stringy and black. And you have, uh, you, I think you get to ask what, two questions from your move, if I'm not mistaken? Yes. Uh, you can ask those in the, in the scene, or if you want to tell me beforehand, you can do that too. I'll leave it up to you. Uh, I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to get into it a little bit first, just because we've okay. we've heard very little of this whole threat. Sure. And she she looks at you. She turns. She seems to be quite conscious and aware of you, right? Um, and she says. Where are you headed this night? It's interesting you should ask that. It's been rather an up in the air sort of thing. You know, schedules changing, interruptions, late night packages, unexpected meetings. It's been quite an evening. You must live a very fantastically active social life. Huh. Usually it just seems I lounge about and do nothing. But no, some nights everything just seems to pile up now, doesn't it? How do you? You seem to be enjoying a stroll through the streets of London tonight. Mm. I felt a compulsion to rise up from my watery grave and be reminded what it's like in places where the air is warm and where hot blood flows through the body. Well, I'll say what it's like here is on a very tight schedule at the moment. So, you have until the end of our cab ride to make yourself known. What, what are you here for? What do you intend to do? Just my first question. You called out to me. It is no accident we are in this cab together, sir. The driver told me you were expecting me, in fact. I didn't know. I'm heading somewhere else entirely. I don't even know you. I simply answered the call, and yet, since we are here, I will tell you this. The creature you seek 
is no harm to anyone. just ignore the fact that that is a very long list and it would take uh, most of the rest of our ride to sort of sort out the everything that you might be talking about. No harm. Creatures generally running through... What creature? And she takes your hand and presses it into hers. She cups your hands and you suddenly have this like sensation of the ocean, of salt water, of cool breezes, and fathomless depths. And she says, you know which creature I speak of. Um, and I think is that like vision, that feeling washes over him and she's like holding his face. Uh, his anger just sort of like it cracks, it breaks, and and he starts just crying, um, like tears streaming from his eyes. So he just looks up at her and says, "What? What do you all want from me? Why can't I get a single night of peace? Why can't I go where I'm trying to go and just have a normal day, just be a normal person for one night?" What, what is so important about me? You are the only one who can see us fully, sir. You just don't like being ignored. And she gives kind of a laugh. And as she laughs, she kind of coughs up bits of brackish water, dribbles down her chin and she says <laughs> I have many suitors beneath the sea well so just a peaceful unnatural creature of the sea come wandering through London to do no one any harm. What? To ride in cabs like you? And she turns and she presses her face close to yours as if she's going to kiss you, but she does not. And she says, the creature merely seeks what we all seek, love. I think I'll reach up and sort of touch the side of her face, grab it where she had sort of grabbed my chin. Fine. What you want from me is attention. You have it. <laughs> Do you have any more questions or anything? No. Yeah. She leans back, kind of casually leans on her hand, her elbow propped against the side, and smiles and says, I fear you would not be able to satisfy me, sir. And she just disappears. Let's go over to Marcus. <laughs> oh boy. So you are you racked with shock and nerves and terror and horror. Oh, oh. Stepping into this purple lit nursery. You see the crib, you see all this the tree, There's a, there are moths and dragonflies and things like that, right? Mushrooms. And before you even break the threshold of the door, or maybe just as you break the threshold of the door, see the door is to your left, opening inward, right? And so you hear on the other side of it, the distinct slurping sounds of 
sexual activity taking oh. place on the other side. Oh, my. They grow up so fast. Indeed. Uh, um, I had I had given that little off tune whistle, which we'd seen my sort of flashback, right? Where I had we'd seen some sort of encounter with a purple eyed beautiful woman, mm -hmm. and so as I I whistled and I'm hearing this, my face is drained, and I have you have you come back? Where are you? What are you doing? I'll sling the door to the side. If you sling the door to the side, you will see... You will see... A young man, not the woman you were anticipating. A young man, uh, quite naked. Um, looks very similar to the young man in, your, in, uh, in the vision that Mr. Burns had, but different um i believe you had the vision didn't you mr burns wasn't that you or is that a different session <laughs> or a different play test um you see this man and he is he is he's got very very fine facial features very uh, he's got pointy ears short dark hair um uh, a a slight build and he is uh he is uh being filleted by uh, a woman who, by the, by her state of half dress, seems to be just a common prostitute. <sighs> While well, he sits in a rocking chair that Ms. Mrs. Milner probably used to rock him to sleep when he was but a babe. And he looks up and he smiles and says, well, I'm quite sure I don't know who you're referring to, but I have never been one to be uncomfortable with spectators. Please close the door. Step inside. I'll step inside and sort of raise my umbrella up slightly. This is not your home. You don't belong here. No, oh, but I do belong here. My mother and father, they were very, very delighted to have me back. And, well, I'm happy to be here. They don't know what you are. Mm, but I can tell that you do. I'm not the first of my kind you've seen, am I? The whole time, this, this prostitute is still going down at him the whole time. No. No, you are not. Yes. Well, I can't let you leave. You know that, right? I was going to say the same thing to you. Hmm. Well, I suppose even though your outer shell is a bit... has a bit of a patina, shall we say, I can tell there's a fighter in you. And it would be an epic struggle. These poor people have lost enough. You're a mockery of their child. <sighs> Look, you've stumbled onto something that is far beyond your ability to comprehend. I kind of like you, even though we've only just met, and I really don't want to kill you. And so I tell you what, and he leans, he kind of like takes this prostitute and just sort of tosses her to the side and leans forward. If you promise me you won't say a single word about what you've seen tonight, I'll tell you what we're up to and let you leave. Tell me your tale, creature. You must say the words. I promise I will not speak a word of what I have seen tonight. Oh, 
I promise I will not speak a word of what I've seen tonight. And he kind of like, as he does this, he's like visibly renewed. And he leans back in the rocking chair and says, Splendid. I'm going to cut over to the warehouse. So I think the last thing that Sally No Face said to you was, this is most embarrassing or something like that, right? Let's look at conditions. Who has, does one of you have tainted? One of you has tainted. Dr. Wright has tainted. She's looking at you, Dr. Wright. You're staring at her. And she looks, she does look surprised. And she has no weapons in her hands or anything like that. And you're much bigger than she is. You definitely have the advantage here, right? What do you do? Do I know that she's the one behind all this though? Maybe not, but she's a creepy person wearing a wooden mask and a long white coat. <laughs> and I don't know. She doesn't. She seems she seems suspicious. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And I am Victorian, so yeah. I do judge people by the way they look. Well, I think your tainted condition would kind of like also give you a certain degree of like a certain sense of like here's a darkness, right? Like here is a here's a fellow dark traveler, right? Okay, yeah. I I don't know if my first instinct would be to kill her. I think I would try to subdue her. Ms. White, what do you do? I kill her. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at your things. You have unnerved. I think that's going to be a problem. Um, what do well, you do? Maybe, maybe it helps me kill her because really the unnerving is the thing driving me to no, You need her. steady nerves to get your shot off. I assume you're shooting her. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I have you, passes to the list. Oh, yeah, passes to the list. Shooting her while I'm trying to subdue her at the same time. <laughs> I mean, well, so what are you doing? Like, are you in the way? I do I think Ventidius is kind of like, yeah, I mean, you could probably shoot over his shoulder for sure. But... All right. Yeah, yeah hmm. I think I'm going forward and then, like, because she stumbled, and I think she's still on the ground. Yeah, she, and yeah, she's I, definitely like she's like kind of prone, right? Like she's definitely vulnerable. Yeah, I probably don't have too much of a clear shot then. Um, I think I I say step aside so we can end this creature. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I I turn. <laughs> I turn, but I don't look at you directly because I don't want to like divert my attention completely. And I say, she is but a woman. The mask and clearly here for nefarious purposes. No one lingers in the dark, hiding their face generally. Um, I'm gonna try to subdue her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm into it. Uh, so, but just give me like a um, let's do the night move, and we'll do it with vitality, uh, regular roll because you don't have any applicable uh, conditions. Uh, but I do want to know what you're afraid will happen right now if you fail. Um, I'm afraid that. Uh that I made the wrong choice and she's not who we were after. Yeah, interesting. I think it's worse than that. I think that um, it's kind of, well, it's kind of like last time. Uh, if you, if you get, like, if you, if, if you subdue her without Basically, if you subdue her without, uh, like, without quickly silencing her in some way, she will. She will reveal some things about you you may not want Ms. White to know. 
Right, uh, that's fair. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a still roll. Roll fatality. Oh, I need to pull up the dice roller. <laughs> I don't think. And when you when you start to go up to her, I'm like, she's a predator posing as a house cat. I ignore you. <laughs> Sorry, give me one sec. I need to open up a different browser to roll. Miss White, did you want to do anything? Uh, well, I'm not sure what I would do as you are <laughs> trying to like wrap yourself around her form, right? Yeah. I warned you though. She's gonna be. I bet it's gonna be scary. She go bite you or something. Yeah, I don't think this is a wise choice, but this is <laughs> yeah. the choice that Ventidius would have made. Yep. <sighs> Mall Santa shows surprisingly poor judgment. Hmm? That thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Uh, what was the die result? I have not finished uh, loading the page yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. We'll just, it's fine. We can take a second. It's no big deal. No big deal. Okay. I'll take a go. minute to look at my notes. Oh, it's a nine, but I don't know if uh, Vitality is where I have one minus one. Just give me a sec. Well, I guess it doesn't make a difference, really. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, Unless you have plus one. <laughs> no, it's, I do not. It's okay. nine. Uh, I'll take the fiction. So you you do you do grab her. Um, you hoist her up. I think you kind of like push her into that little room that she was in. It's quite dark. And you can see Ms. White still in the vestibule, kind of like outlined by by like the street light, right? Mm. Or, or limited by the street light coming in from the entrance. And you kind of like grab her and like, you know, you've, you've got hold of her tight. And she whispers to you, not to where Ms. White can hear, but she whispers to you, she says, I've been watching you, Dr. Wright. I know what you get up to in your secret lab. Um, yeah. Uh, have, have I, have I tied her up already or not yet? I think you just have hold of her. I mean, she's not going to get away. You've got you that, that you've got like, she's, she's subdued. Okay. One hand I'm holding her down and the other hand I'm reaching behind me to pull the curtain over the vestibule so that Miss White also can't see. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a door. Remember we opened like this this weird door, so maybe you close it. I don't think I close it though, because that's almost like too too obvious. You know I, I like I mean? the idea of you finding finding a curtain because you're I can tell you're trying to deco in the dark. Like <laughs> <laughs> there could, yeah, I think um, I think there can be like a yeah, there can be like a um I think there can be like a uh, yeah, like maybe maybe you see there's like a sort of uh, um, some kind of like tapestry or something above the door, right? That is like uh, that you can kind of like pull down so that like you can't be seen, but you could, but but Ms. White can still hear everything inside, right? And um, or maybe there's or maybe there's just a curtain, you know, who knows? But in any case, I'm curious, like, what's the importance of Ms. White not being able to see, but being able to hear. Um, I, th I think it's, well, what I intended to do after that was like, so it's like, because he would, she was like talking very quietly to me. And once I pull the curtain, I'm going to start choking her. Oh, nice. She, she continues whispering to you. She says, she says, don't worry, don't worry. I'm not going to tell your friend that no. you no, are you doing won't. licentious medical procedures. Weird science. Who are you trying to bring back to life, Dr. Wright? Who is left a void in your heart 
I know the look. I've seen it in the mirror myself many, many times. I think, uh, yeah, I just smile a very thin smile <laughs> and I um, ap apply more pressure with my hand. I think I can probably like choke her out. <laughs> yeah. As you're doing so, she will gasp out the words. She's not even resisting. Hmm. She'll gasp out the words. You may be able to bring it back to life. But what if it looks a horror? What will you do? I can make it beautiful. Do I want to do this? Oh, um, do it, do it. Okay, uh, I slap her. I think I'm gonna push on Tainted and I want a composure roll. Sure, to yeah, continue that makes with sense. this action. And you're gonna yeah. make it a disadvantage, please. What are you afraid will happen? Um, I'm afraid that I'm going to uh, give in to to like her, I guess, basically her bargain for life. I think it's worse than that even. You will pretend to have murdered her and even tell the rest of Hargrave how she's dead. Oh my gosh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Composure. I rolled a six, but I'm pretty sure I have really high com Yeah, I have two composure, so that's... Oh, but wait, sorry. I'm supposed to roll three, right? Yeah, take the two lowest. Yeah. Okay, I'll roll the other one as well. Hold on. Let me re-roll everything. <laughs> that's three ones. Okay. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> She, you know, she says this to you, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, like, I think when you pulled the curtains, like, I think the room is structured so that, like, when you kind of, like, pulled that curtain or that tapestry or whatever it was, there was, like, a, you pulled it down. I think it, like, I think there is, it let in a little bit of moonlight from a window that was behind it. And so now you can kind of see her wooden mask because you have your hands but you, I think you loosen them a little bit at this offer. And she says, let me show you my work. And she pushes the mask back and she's stunningly beautiful. But she turns and you can see the scars behind her jaw and ear. But the face is gorgeous. Mm. She says, we can do this together, Dr. Wright. Colleagues, you and I. But it's best if we work in secret. It's best if your companions at Hargrave House do not know what you are up to. And she then like grabs like a stack of boxers or something and like slams them down as if there's a struggle going on inside. Okay. And I'm she going cries to... out. She even cries out. She says, get your hands off me. <sighs> and then after she does that, I grab her arm, one of her arms, whatever, and I break it, her forearm. <laughs> nice. So that the sound of like breaking the arm, yeah. like yeah, she cries travels out. through those curtains. <laughs> she collapses. And I think at that point, I'm just rolling forward with the with the with the GM move here. You, I think Maisie, you would like respond and look inside, and you see just you see her in a crumpled pile in the corner, and you realize that Ventidius is killed. You believe Ventidius has killed. I yeah. hope that her neck is at like a really really yeah. sharp angle. Yeah, because that was supposed to be the sound of her neck breaking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I step back and then I pull the curtain and I cover her body with it. I throw it over her body. Yeah, probably just in time because she probably can't stay silent for very long with a broken arm, right? Mm -hmm. And I think like she'll just be like kind of whimpering in terrible pain, but knowing she has to keep her mouth shut, right? As mm -hmm. best she can. 
Maisie, how are, what are you doing or how are you feeling? <laughs> I think I'm pissed off because I misconstrue it as you trying to save like a lady's sensibilities or something, right? Like, like a sort of chivalrous thing where instead of me shooting, you're like taking it upon yourself to save me this and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think she says, I can take care of myself perfectly well, you crude human. And uh, sheaths her pistol and I think just like storms out and, and waits for you in the alley or something, steaming and fuming. Nice. Good. <sighs> Overseen. Mabel, who has gotten a bit long in the tooth. <laughs> What do we see that shows how Mabel is trying to keep up with the younger girls? Oh, I think she has like an elaborate, um, crap, what's those things called? Um, they always wore them to like make their um, stomachs tighter no, and their, it. yeah, corset, except it's like even more elaborate. Like she's modified hers to, you know, like be even more painful and, and thinner and stuff as a, like a form of punishment. And I think her booth, like all of the booths are a little bit dark because like they generally are, <laughs> especially in like a more run down, sketchier uh, whorehouse. Um, but hers is like almost completely dark. And there's just like a very s small, uh, almost burnt out tallow there so that you can't really see her. Um, I think she's uh, she's smoking a cigarette, and then she sort of, like, grinds it out on a, a railing there outside. Uh, you see the, the end of it, which is not just, like, red with lipstick like you might expect. It's, like, caked and bright red with, like, all this thick makeup that she's wearing. And I think we can see on a table where there are bottles of like uh, patent medicines, but we can see one that uh, is quite large and clearly used often with the alum uh, skin uh, renewal that she probably uses to tighten up her business. Mr. Burns, you are dropped off at the address, dingy flat, where you are led to believe this young man, possibly his girlfriend, live, who were attacked by the fish creature. Unless you had some other plan. I can't remember if you were going somewhere else. I think that's the last thing. Um... I had uh, I, I was actually changing and going over to the exhibition because of the oh, right. the face that got delivered like sent me into a rage. Well, let's, just have that, let's just have that scene. You 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 arrive as you see Maisie and Doctor Wright step out. They look a little a little white, but calm. Maisie looks pissed. Let's just have that scene. Um, and uh, as a uh, as Theo is like stumbling out of the the carriage, like there's some smoke that leaks out from the door. He's putting away a flask, uh, and, and he looks up and he just says, "Where? Where are they? Have the 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 little boy, the the whoever he works for, where are they?" I don't see any little boys around here. <laughs> I see them every fucking where. Well, uh, welcome to your solace, I suppose. <laughs> there is an evil inside there. There's, we have to do something about it. There's ghosts and dead people and faces, and we have to do something. Oh, well. Mr. Wright likes to charge into places and take care of business. Perhaps just send Mr. Wright. I tip my hat. <laughs> <laughs> At you, Mr. Burns. 
What did you see in there? What's in there? Why won't you tell me? Why won't anyone tell me? There was a woman who had a mask on, and she is taken care of. There's no little boys to speak of, I assure you. Tell me, Mr. Burns, what did you do with that heart? I studied it. Performed investigations. May I have a look at it? I'm afraid they weren't that kind of investigation. Not much left of it. That's unfortunate. There's much, not much else here. Would you like to return? That's it. That's, that's all. Dead actresses, ghosts and cabs and strange creatures crawling through the streets of London. That's it. It's over. We just, we go home now. Were what you did you find out about the heart? That is no more. <laughs> Why the heart? Why the children and fairies and old fables and nothing of today or importance? What happened inside? Return to look at Maisie. <laughs> um, I say, I, I think we're not meant to find any catharsis here. I'm not sure what you're working through, but uh, I am not sure the answers you would have found in there satisfying anyway. I unwrap my scarf, which I think I am wearing a scarf. Um, and I look like I'm about to like wrap it around your, like wrap it around your shoulders. And then I like stop and then I just like give it to you. Uh, Mr. Burns. I think actually, uh, like, as you come in to look like you're going to put it around me, like, he he shoves back against you, like, shoves your arms away and, like, goes off kilter and, and falls backwards into the street. Miss White, I will, I will call a cab for you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I nod. Indeed. Seems like a good place to cut, yeah. Back at the nursery. You've just made this promise to never speak of what you saw this night, Marcus. Mm -hmm. A lot of secrets suddenly piling up in Hargrave House. And this young beautiful, vital young man is sitting before you, um, engorged. And the prostitute is looking like back between you both. I'll right. kind of motion with my umbrella out, Harlot. This isn't <laughs> for you. And she, she, she does and she scrambles out. Right. And he stands up and he approaches you and he says, in the old days, business was conducted with certain rituals and formalities. Contracts were sealed in a very particular manner, old man. What do you say? Shall we consummate our business relationship? Don't try your wiles on me. You have my word 
that should be sufficient. Yes, I suppose it is. I am but a mere foot soldier. Sorry to disappoint you. But the one I serve, he intends to establish his court here in your city. And so he's beginning the process of putting us all in place. There's something big happening in London, something huge, but he isn't telling us exactly what it is. But whatever it is, he's going to an awful lot of trouble to move his pieces onto the board. The one you serve, one yes. from your lands. Yes, yes. Bring court here to London. Yes, 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 because something is happening in London. But until I'm given my orders, I'm going to sit here and live off the largesse of my lovely parents. You wouldn't believe what I had to tell them to convince them to bring her over. <clears throat> Lies are your stock in trade. It's hmm. kind of all of your kind. Your kind are so easily manipulated. True. Hmm. When? Uh, when? When will he be coming? I don't know. I suppose whenever he's done building his court. And then he like sits back down in the rocking chair and he like raises his right leg and like puts his foot on your chest and begins like walking his toes up your chest. And he says, one last chance, old man. You'd like it where I come from. We have no concept of age. I can see right through your patina. I can see the vital, powerful, yet recently brought low man beneath. I've seen your kind's love before. And I'll slap his foot to the side and turn and uh and i'm going to leave i i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and so i as i slam the door behind me i'm going to move by the gas lights turn them off turn them back up to full all the way down the hall as i'm going down the stairs turning all the lights off back on as i go through and when i see the parents Ah, Mr. Milner, Miss Milner, uh, may I speak with you outside for just a moment? He says, uh, they're like, oh, yes, yes. Did you see our son? Yes, charming. Isn't he boy. remarkable? Yes, remarkable indeed. And as I step outside the door, Mr. Milner, uh, a cigarette, if you might. He's like, oh, certainly, sir, certainly. And he gets you a cigarette. Right. As I light it up, you... <clears throat> should probably forget this evening and i'm going to toss it back into the house <laughs> hopefully catching all the gas that i have released inside to set it on fire indeed the place goes up very quickly <sighs> i'm gonna get let you clear a condition for that little Thank outburst you. uh you can clear um you can clear terrified. I think you've gotten, you've reclaimed some, some of your nerve here. I gotta tell you that that whole scene got me shaking though. That was a good <laughs> one. Uh, let's take five minutes. Uh, we'll come back and we'll do the uh, night work move, and then we'll do uh, day phase. Right.
How's your week been, Jason? Uh, good. I'm yeah, pretty good. Excellent. Just, uh, you know, no, no, nothing too remarkable, I guess, but... <laughs> hmm. How about you? Not bad. Not bad. A lot of games. <laughs> That's good. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Rachel, I heard your game is going really well. Patrick says it's a blast. Uh, which one is yeah. that? Uh, Never Knows Best. Oh, it's oh, so Best. cool. Yeah, I just need to tweak up a few things, but I think the it's doing most of what I what I want already, which is nice. Awesome. Cool. All right. Uh, oh, did everybody do um, Echoes in the Dark last time for, for that night phase? Does everyone remember I if they did? I think we, yeah, I think we held off on getting the XP for it, though, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, between like the last session and this session, did you, if you did a Echo in the Dark, um, I we caught one from, definitely caught one from Dr. Wright just then. I know you did one last week, uh, mm -hmm. Tyler. Um, anybody else? Uh, Fraser, you said you did not do one with Maisie. I, I did one last session. But oh, okay, yeah, as long as you did one last session, you get to mark an XP because we didn't get credit for it last session. So. Uh, or you shouldn't have, but, or if you did, just you know, leave it be, I guess. But. I believe I did. <laughs> <laughs> also, over the break, I mean, this is, I guess, not important, but I Googled how much does it cost to, <laughs> to, to uh, like, how much do you pay a prostitute uh -huh. to have, specifically have intercourse with her and it's around five shillings oh that seems a bargain <laughs> um <laughs> I, I don't i don't know if that's i mean yeah. uh, it's it's a decent amount actually oh is it really yeah. oh, okay oh and yeah I, and i guess like in victorian times it would have been like do they have like yeah. a, do they say like what the equivalent would be like it didn't say so, but it's like there are so many different units under a shilling. Like there's penny, and then there's half penny, and then there's three pence, and all that stuff. So it's like hmm. it's a decent amount. Hmm. Cool. And you could also pay one shilling for just a look, and then another <laughs> sh another shilling for a feel. Wow. According to this Cora answer. Wow, that's pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel like I feel like all the money would be in the feels and the looks, right? Like you know, you do it. <laughs> That's you know. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty quick, so you can get a lot of those yeah, in, in a night. Yeah. Oh boy! All right, let's do day phase. Um, oh, let's do the night move actually. Uh, night work uh, for the mother, mother, mother. All right, let's read that. Uh, when not engaged in the hunt with your colleagues, you spend your nights doing house calls, helping Scotland Yard examine corpses dragged from the river, and of course, working on the child. Uh, roll with reason, please. I got a four. A four. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens on a miss. Uh, choose one and I make a move. So you still get to choose one. Oh, um, I'll, I'll get another body part. <laughs> All right, cool. What'd you end up taking? Um, what did I choose last time? Um, I think I got a, um, I got a torso this time. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, right. You are, you have your torso and you are, I think this is like, I think I'm going to say this is like some nights after the last night phase. Okay. So the day phase will start with a bit of time having passed. That's okay. And I think you show up in your dragging this torso back. And Sally No Face is there. And she has her arm in a splint. Um, uh, on a splint and kind of like, you know, held in place by a, you know, kind of wrap around her neck and, and arm. And she is not wearing the mask. The mask is pushed up on her head. 
and she says, <sighs> she looks at the torso as you lay it out on the slab. And she says, why did you choose that? So she's at Hargrave House, right? No, no. Is your is your thing in Hargrave House or is it somewhere else? The lab is in where I'm assembling the yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, that's in Hargrave House. I guess. Oh yeah. I, I guess I, I, I could. I, also, I, I, I couldn't remember, but um, yeah. Uh, I I thought it was, but it I, it could also not be. It doesn't. Yeah, um, we haven't seen it on screen yet, right? Like we don't know no. for sure where it's at, right? I th I think that if I remember correctly, I think the move implies that it's somewhere else. Like it's. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. sure. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Let's look. If not, I probably should make that clear. Uh, just as you have a secret laboratory, it doesn't really. Yeah. Yeah. Just might be awkward if we walked in. Oh look! Right, yeah, all these yeah. body parts. Yeah, I think the idea is that the, the other members of the house can't see it or find it ever. Okay. In any case, sure. yeah, you you lay it out there, and she's, and she's like, um, you know, she's like, why did you choose this? I glance up at her and then I pointedly glance at her broken arm and then I continue dragging the torso in. <sighs> and she's like hovering over you, looking at the body. She says, I can't do anything with this. Truly, I cannot. I mean, the, the, the scarring, the missing limbs it's going to be it's going to be most hideous you will never want to undress this thing that is for tr the truth of the matter <sighs> and you're just doing, yeah I'm, I'm going to turn around and <laughs> geez um and grab her um like like this yeah so like by the her jaw i guess yeah. um I only want you to provide me a face. Yes. And then I like let her go and turn back around. And then she says, there's a very, very beautiful one at Hargrave House. You know of the one I speak. Um, what do I do? I, I pick up my cane and I just point very slowly towards the door. She grabs her heavy overcoat and throws it over, throws it on takes the mask off, muscles her hair a little bit so she doesn't look like a creep crawling around with a mask on her head. Sure. And she says, I'll find you a splendid face, Dr. Wright. This is what I do. If you touch him, I don't know if you will have another thing to put a face on. I don't tell you how to do your work, Dr. Wright. And she turns. I would have you let me do mine. I think I'm just staring down at this, like, these, like, broken pieces of bodies. <laughs> Maybe regretting my decision. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Let's cut to the day phase. So, yeah. I'll remind you, the purpose of the day phase is to interrogate dramatic conflicts, frame up the colleague move for purposes, various purposes, but principally to release conditions, uh, to continue an investigation or to show your character at leisure or any or all of the above. Who has an idea for a day phase scene? I do, but I wanted to see if it was okay with Tyler. Um, I was, and and Patrick actually. I was thinking, well, actually everybody, <laughs> but I I thought it might be fun uh, to 
um, based on what Maisie has seen this to go to uh, Marcus and be like, sums up with Mr. Wright. Uh, but I don't know if that would be a fun path. Yeah, I think like, I mean, I think I think like something we should, probably, should clarify from that night phase is like, Ventidius broke her arm. And so presumably she was like, still making noises and like you know or or, or like or like you know or, or it was maybe maybe you you picked up on like she's not quite dead like i think it'd be fair for you to pick up on maybe she might have been dying but she may not you didn't see her die right yeah so i think that's a good fact there yeah is that like a do you think that would be a fun place to navigate to agatha or are you more like i would like to you know, explore that in the third act or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I think it's good. And like, yeah, I definitely decided to go with that bad choice so we could explore all the terrible consequences. <laughs> okay, that's good. Cool. I just wanted to make it clear it wasn't because you with, you know, didn't let me kill a person. So <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> well, if you're going to have this scene about Ventidius with the other two, I would definitely try to like think of ways you can also work in a couple of those DCs also, right? Because two of them involve Ventidious. So. Well, what I was going to play towards is probably hitting up Marcus directly and um, try to do the colleague move to unearth something in yeah, which both cool. of us would be pointed towards um, Agatha's character. Cool. Let's frame it up. Like, where do we find the two of you? Um... Well, let's not do my room like usual. Where, where's Marcus usually hanging? I, I imagine I have a room upstairs that's probably smaller than most of yours, but very neat and tidy. Sure. Um, so maybe I, I navigate to there and then like to signal that it's a serious conversation when I come in this time, I like close the door behind me as well, but I kind of like the idea if, um, uh, Theo were listening in or something like that, um, by the door when he sees it closed or something, that might be fun, but I'll, I'll leave that up to up to Patrick. But okay. uh, when I enter, so it's just like a really clean looking room. Yeah, and you probably see Marcus is has pulled out a chest from underneath his bed and mm -hmm. is, is rummaging through it. And as you come in, he, oh, Miss Macy, and he'll close it back down. Um, is everything all right? Everything is okay. And then I like sort of make sure that the door is uh, closed but i have something to discuss some some maybe perturbing information from last night oh dear um last night when we went to encounter um well actually we didn't mean to encounter her there i think we just went to go see a play right from what Art i recall exhibit. yeah we, we went to go see you know, the art exhibit or, or whatever, and encountered a strange, <laughs> very strange woman wearing a, uh, a mask who seemed like she was about to assault us in all honesty. Are when, you all right? Oh, I, I am fine because, um, because Ventidius stepped in and obscured my vision and uh, assailed this woman, leaving her to... Uh, ostensibly die <laughs> oh my I, uh, my goodness indeed I, I took it to be oh wait that ventidius right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it wasn't ventidius sorry <laughs> um we're close but... we can call him what we want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the doctor i should say oh. this instead <laughs> So uh, Dr. Wright murdered a woman last night? Uh, it seemed that way, yes. And at the time, I thought perhaps it was just chivalry, like uh, protecting me. Perhaps I was in danger. But leaving somebody dying on the floor is seems strange, does it not? Who You say this woman was going to assault you. 
It seems we, as so, yes. I, I, well, I, I can only appreciate that Dr. Wright was there to protect you. Uh, not that you usually need protecting, Miss Macy, but uh, it seems a little extreme to murder a woman at an art exhibit. I mean, was it modern art? <laughs> uh, I don't think we ever got to see the art, in fact, but... Did you know just... this woman? No, it, it just seems strange to me it, that... The whole thing was was quite odd, if I'm being honest. <laughs> hmm. The, the good doctor is usually so very, well... Collected, right? I was going to say cold and logical, but yes, <laughs> collected is a very, uh, is an appropriate term as well. Indeed. Uh, did he say anything? Did he know who this woman was? As usual, the doctor did not express much at all. <laughs> Oh. I began to worry. I, I had the thought that perhaps the doctor was warming to us some, but it would seem that still he keeps secrets, and well, I, I, I can't say I'm delighted that you were brought into what could, I imagine, bring the police to our door. Indeed. Uh, and then I, like, step close to you, and um, put my hand on your uh, shoulder, perhaps, and like lean in conspiratorially. And I say, you're the only one that I can trust with this. But I think there is more to the good doctor than we know. Why don't we go ahead and resolve the colleague move here since we're mm -hmm. kind of the scene here. Um, so, this is definitely intimate. Um, you can clear a condition that makes sense. Ms. White, unnerved, I think it's fine. Maybe getting this off your chest is enough to clear that. Cool. And you get to um, choose one of the options there under the colleague move. And I have been wanting to get another DC out. Okay. Um, and this... Uh, Let's see, with our others, we have Denise softer side keeps getting closed off. Theo will break through. Denise cannot bring himself to admit his feelings. Sounds like we're putting another one on him. But I would rather frame it something like, uh, like Maisie believes there's something Dr. The Wright, Wright is, is hiding from us. There's some something along, something along those lines. And purely for mechanical reasons, I have to admit, I'd rather not have my name involved. <laughs> in <that laughs> sure. <DC. laughs> sure. Yeah, I think um, something between Maisie and, and Dr. Wright would be pretty good. Because uh, I don't think we have like a Maisie Dr. Wright DC, do we? Mm -mm. I don't think so. We do not, no. So maybe like... Um, and if we could maybe like, I mean, I think we, if we could sharpen it a little bit, like, okay, believe something's going on. Okay, that's fine. But maybe there's like something else going on too, like maybe a little, a little deeper, possibly even. Maybe. Go ahead. Maybe Maisie believes uh, the doctor has nefarious intentions or something. Do you think you picked up maybe on the woman looking like a doctor herself with that maybe. white lab coat and the mask? I think I'm pretty intelligent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so maybe like just at some point in the scene, like, I think if you express this idea of like, maybe Dr. Wright isn't telling us everything or something like mm. that. I think that yeah. would be good. Um, yeah. But I do like the, I like the, I like the idea of like, maybe Maisie's becoming increasingly suspicious that Dr. Wright is engaged in some kind of work, some untoward work, right? So. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think as you finish saying this to me, I, I think I probably like break a little bit. And, and you could see in my face that I, I, I'm bearing a burden too, as I, I kind of embrace you. I'm just glad you're all right. Miss Macy, and then kind of collect myself. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> nice. Is there something that you needed to say to me, Marcus? No, Miss Macy. It's it's all going to be all right. Don't worry. 
suspicious eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was the fact that the night you guys came home, he smelled like smoke. <laughs> yeah. That's so good, Marcus. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, just at some point, Tyler, go ahead and just write that uh, thing in there. Probably okay. the best thing is just to make a copy of like a cell or you just copy this right here and paste it on there. Okay. And then we just clear this yeah. out. Beautiful. Number five. All right. Well, really, truly, it's number four. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, Mr. Burns, do you have a scene you want to frame? Um, I really don't think he's satisfied by it's fine. Don't go in there. Don't look at that. It's fine. Everything's fine now. Um, to go in where? Uh, the the address where the, oh, the warehouse. Guard, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're gonna go over there in the day. Yeah, I think so. Interesting. Um, because that. Uh, no one will talk to him. No, they're Ventidius and Maisie both were refusing to say anything. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so is the scene just you going, just taking a cab over to the warehouse and checking it out, or what? Uh, within a couple of blocks, and then yeah, I'll, I'll sort of get out and try and be a little bit stealthy um, going down the street. I don't know if it's going to be like swarming with cops or if. Uh, what sort of evil is going on here? More yeah, ghosts? Um, I think it seems pretty normal. I mean, there's just a lot of people around doing their work, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think you do see... You do see the little boy, the dapper boy, sticking out like quite a sore thumb among all these like rough... these rough dock worker guys or these rough like, you know, dudes. Uh, I'd like to try and get close to him without him seeing me, if possible. Yeah. Uh, what are you afraid will happen? Um. Well, I mean, he's in the middle of this crowd of like dock workers. I think this. Yeah, I think it's like. I know, well, they're not dock workers because this is not by the water. But I think this is oh, just but, like a yeah, couple like, of like tough. You know, there's a couple of, like, just kind Guys of... Guys like, who lift and carry lorries or what, Yeah, yeah, lorries <laughs> or, or, like, uh, you know, like, yeah, just day laborers or whatever, right? Like, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm afraid that, like, he's close with them and he'll call them down on me, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Roll plus uh, composure. Let's look, at, let's look at yours, too. <laughs> I'm angry and tainted. Uh, no, I don't think those really apply. You can, you can just roll straight. All right. Wow, that's a 10. Nice. You can get close enough to where you can overhear uh, what's going on. Uh, do you want to just kind of describe how you get in close, what it looks like? Um, yeah, I, I think the, the kid is like moving through this area uh, and as he... Uh, yeah, as he as he walks by a, a stack of crates, there's sort of a, a bit of a shaded area behind it. Uh, just from out behind them comes sort of flicking and landing on the ground in front of him. Uh, that card, the the like invitation mm. card. Are you trying to like signal your presence? Is that the idea? Yeah, I'm trying to catch his attention and pull him off from the rest of them into a yeah. like an alley or something. That, that'll work. Um, he'll like kind of, he'll see that and he'll look at all these like guys and he'll say eyes open and he like spins on his heel and like carefully but stylishly creeps around the crates to try to see. He's got the little thing in his hand and he says <clears throat> is anyone there? I say, identify yourself, please. It's like a cloud of smoke comes out, and I hold out a pipe to him and say, it looked like a hard day in the sun. I thought you might enjoy the break. Hmm. 
so. What is the reason of this little house call, sir? Well, I had heard such rave reviews of the exhibition, but I'm afraid I got turned away at the door last night. Hmm. Yes. <sighs> Perhaps you can answer a question for me. It is most fortuitous that you are here right now. I seem to have lost track of my employer. Hmm. Seems a rather large thing to lose track of. It is most distressing, sir. Most Did you try looking where you last saw her? Well, and he looks in at the warehouse and says, and he kind of looks, makes really like direct eye contact with it and says, she was nowhere to be found. Hmm. So nothing inside the great gallery? No evidence or clues? No, sir. No. But you and yours were here last night. Perhaps some of your friends might know where my employer has gone off to. That's rather why I was here. My associates seemed reticent about the details of what happened here. Came to see for myself. But mystery upon mystery, there's nothing and no one. Yes, no one. <clears throat> so, what is an enterprising young man to do when he finds himself unemployed? I assure you, I am not unemployed, sir. Oh, I... Of course not, yes. It's rather just a, a matter of you having misplaced your employer. But I'm just saying, hypothetically, should you find yourself in such a state in the future, I mean... What would you do but turn to people who had reason to recognize your talent, your worth, your abilities? Are you suggesting I go to work for you, sir? Or are you just trying to get my goat again? <laughs> Come, boy, I thought we were past that. I want nothing of your goat. I was simply saying, you seem a very capable young man. I hate to see such talent go to waste. If you find yourself wanting, you know where to find me. And he kind of like straightens up his little coat, his tie. And he says, if I were you, sir, I would keep one eye over my shoulder at all times. I'm no threat, of course. But those you live with, I have a sense that they may be up to bad business. That's remarkable. It's almost as if you read my mind. I was going to give you the very same warning hmm. about your friends. Perhaps we can watch each other's backs. He steps close to you and he's like, you know, he only comes up to your chest, right? He's, he's fairly young and says, it would seem we are as if two young sunbathers out for an afternoon by the seaside taking a dip in dark waters, surrounded by sharks in all places, sir. Best not to let yourself get cut, then. It only draws them in. Indeed, sir. Now, if you don't mind, the smell of this place disagrees with me. Uh, yes. Employment and whatnot. Daylight hours ticking by. Not so waste time. He wasn't. And he spins on his heel and marches back out to his little troop of thugs. 
and says, <clears throat> that'll be all, boys. You're dismissed. And they all kind of break up, wander off. Nice. Um, sort of fade into the background. Yeah. Dr. Wright, do you have a scene you'd like to bring? Yes, I... Um... Actually, I would like a scene with Albion. Um, perhaps over lunch? Yeah. I'm not sure well, like how the meals work. <laughs> I mean, I, it would probably be Marcus like, serving you lunch, I suppose. Yeah. 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 And well, actually, maybe it should be. Well, I was going to make it breakfast, but then I was like, all these things already happen. Let's say it's breakfast, though, because I'm holding the newspaper in my hands. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I see on there that there's like um, rather a large section about this explosion <laughs> possibly caused by a gas leak um, within this neighborhood. I don't know. Is it a nice neighborhood or is it a... Uh... It was well to do. Yeah, yeah, it was fairly well to do. Yeah, yeah so it would definitely be in the news. Um, Doctor, your breakfast. Yes, thank you. Tell me, Albion. Is this not where you went two weeks ago? Oh, my. Well, I guess it seems to be. Oh, is this some time after that night? Yeah, because I, yeah. I, I thought that, like, the body, the dragging the torso, it was, like, a bit after, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it seemed like a couple people had scenes that were, like, right after the oh, night okay. before. So we, okay. we can just say this is a little bit later. It's fine. Well, sure, I could say this last night. I, I... Yeah. No, it, no it, it, could, it could be, like, a few days later. We'll just we'll keep it kind of ambiguous. It's fine. And, of course, I went the first time, too, didn't I? Didn't I go once and they didn't? No, I guess I only no, went once. No, you only yeah. went one time. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Actually, I want to say last night because I don't know why the newspaper would still be reporting about it unless cool, cool, something else yeah, happened. Yeah. Okay, last night. <laughs> oh, my gracious. Well, I have to say when I left, uh, exited the door, it was still quite fine. Far be it for me to point out your um, appearances, Albion. But you do seem to be missing half your eyebrow. <laughs> well, uh, the left one. A bit of a bit of a problem with the stove, I'm afraid, Doctor. I should say that uh, it is. Was it also fine when you left it? <laughs> it is a shame that these poor people have had tragedy on top of tragedy, a child lost, and now a home. Perhaps London is not very healthy for them. What did you encounter while you were there? Why did you have to destroy it? And why do you refuse to tell me? Is this not what we are here to do? Well, Doctor, I, uh, I have to say that uh, what I encountered there was much as I expected. A couple distraught over loss. A child still missing and a place that was most unhealthy did you find another heart <laughs> i think the colleague move would be perfect right now sure um if you want to just start like angling toward clearing uh well yeah. i guess tainted if you can maybe make a case for that somehow but... um oh i don't like what is the nature of being tainted like i think it's just like you have just like a like you're just tainted by the darkness of the city, right? Like the, like you have a bit of, a bit of like dark demonic stank okay. on you. <laughs> um. Okay. Sure. Uh, let me pull up the thing for the colleague move. But then Marcus would get to do another thing. Would get to choose from the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. I set down my uh, cutlery on the table. <sighs> to be honest, Albion, 
This whole business has got me down. Which whole business? The missing children? Are obviously such a very distressing thing. Those uh, things would be resolved. The things could be fixed. Our work here seldom seems to reach that point. There is always something else. We must struggle on, Doctor. I believe you're right. Doctor, we... We are soldiers on the front lines of a terrible war. A war that seems to have no end. We must take comfort that we do not fight alone. No, we do not. And I uh, take a sip of the coffee. Or tea, not tea. Um, I th think that's enough for me to trigger my the colleague move, because that's the most, I think, Matidius has ever revealed. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think I just, I think just the, um, you know, kind of like facing like the sort of like dark stuff you all are doing and talking about how it's so endless or whatever, I think is like probably good enough to clear that. Uh, okay. Just, you know, I, I would ask you just like how you feel like as a character, like how does this conversation make you, like how do you feel like whatever dark pall was hanging over you before is lifted a little bit? In a way, it's a little comforting to see that Albion is also has also been keeping his own secrets and keeping his own counsel. And because Albion always gives off this vibe of being super righteous um, and like very like on the straight and narrow. So it's just to be like, we each have our own dark secrets, but that is not that's not enough to pull us down. Yeah, absolutely. So well, I think he just feels justified. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to choose one from the list for colleague move? I do. I think I'm going to clear condition as well. I think I'm going to clear that un uh, that disturbed. Yeah. And uh, I think that a kind of managing to get through without breaking my promise, which I know would have horrible effects, and uh, and seeing. Seeing Dr. Wright more as a person having this moment, I think it makes me feel like we, he and the rest of, we are all in it together. And I think that relieves some of that disturbed feeling that, because I think that this, this faith thing has made, has made Marcus very disturbed. And I think this is going to kind of lift a little of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Mr. Burns, do you have a scene one frame? Um, or no, yeah, or no I, you already did. You just did one, didn't you? Yeah, it's it's Marcus who needs to frame one, right? Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I just yeah, did one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I think we'd seen me when Maisie came in. I was rooting through this uh, chest, and I'd closed it back. And uh, we'll see me back with the chest, and I'm. I've moved aside old clothes, and they're well out of date, but quite fancy. And underneath it, I have several books, and uh, you can see that they are uh, various things on fairy lore um, that he had worked through. You know, they've, they've been well thumbed. Yeah, yeah. He'll look through. To remind me, Patrick, when you told me of the heart, what you saw... You mentioned the coming through and all of that, right? You, yeah. There was a um, white pointed ear, sort of smooth creature came crawling out of the ground, stole the babies, left the heart. All right, That's I think I'm going, I'm going to be looking through, and I'm trying to find like artists' images of various of the the fae, and of course they'll be, you know, how accurate they be. Who knows? But I'm finding them, and especially areas that are talking about changelings, about them leaving. Hmm. I'm going to take this book, 
and I'm going to find Mr. Burns. Go ahead, you can. Where do you and, find Mr. Burns? Um, where can I find? Can I find you like lounging in the library or something like that? Uh, yeah, I or, think so. Okay. As I come in, I I'm looking at the book and and I kind of dog-eared it there. Uh, Mr. Burns, I have to admit, none of this makes any sense to me at all. I've been thinking about what you told me, and, well, I admit it's something I have so little experience on. I did find this book. Yeah. Perhaps you could look through it. It could make some sense to you. As I will hand you the book. What? I, I'm sorry. What book am I looking at? Yeah. When you spoke to me of this heart, uh, the visions you had, Mr. Burns, I felt it important for us to, well, with so many children missing, I, it was very disturbing. Yeah, yeah, we got to find out about more about that damn heart. Everyone's very interested in it. Be a shame if we didn't spend every day talking about that heart. Oh, uh, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Burns. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. Uh, well, uh, hardly hardly be for me to to interrupt your your rest. I'll lay the book down, and it will carelessly open to that uh, to that page I dog-eared. Uh, well, if you have a moment, that that would be lovely. Uh, Tell you what, Marcus. Why don't you have a seat? Let's have an exchange of sorts. I feel like we've been on such a formal relationship, you know. Servant, someone who lives in the house that you're servanting for, you know, betters, whatever. Um, but why don't we have more of an equal exchange? As I can you find wish. out more about this heart that everyone loves, these creatures in your storybooks, but I need something from you. Of course, Mr. Burns. How may I be of service? Tell me what happened inside that warehouse. Well, I was not there, but Miss Maisie and tells me um, that I want to just interject real quickly that this might be colleague move and you might be able to force hmm. I can't cause a colleague move with him you can't oh that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well uh, what does it specifically say on the playbook it says um the employer is the only player character you can frame any intimate scene for the purposes of triggering a colleague move. Oh, uh, well then, I guess you mm -hmm. can't. RP it out then. Maybe he'll <laughs> just tell you. Uh, Miss Maisie. Well, I have to say that Dr. Wright had... He's always seemed a rather prickly sort. I feel like, well, he's getting closer with us all. That's why when Miss Macy said that uh, he reacted rather violently to a, a woman they encountered there, protecting Miss Macy, which of course is well, an admirable quality I can only appreciate, uh, but it became violent. Miss Macy is not certain, but I think the woman was left for dead. Why? Who was this woman? What was she? I don't know, and neither does Miss Maisie. Only that she was there waiting and seemed to have, well, intentions of some sort of violence. Though I, I begin to worry about whether Dr. Wright may have acted rashly. It would be murder, Mr. Burns. So would most of the things that we do at night. It does seem unlike him, though. It does. I... I do hope that he will become more forthright with us. But 
And we all have our secrets, I suppose, don't we, Mr. Burns? Yes, I'm... Well, I will look into your book. I'm sorry if I was a bit snappish. I've just woken up from a nap, but not totally myself. Just give me a day or two, Mr. Albion, and I'll get back to you. Of course, sir. And I think a spot of tea would do you well. Maybe with a drop of brandy, sir? You bring the brandy. I'll, I'll judge my drops for myself. Of course, Mr. Burns. Good. Uh, I think you definitely get to mark the number four DC uh, there, uh, Marcus. Okay. Which is uh, uh, the very last one, actually. Okay. Maisie please Ventidius is involved in something nefarious. You get to mark it twice because of it. <laughs> well, that's not gonna work. Uh, you get to mark it twice because it was, um, because it's Maisie's. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Good. I think everyone's had a chance to frame at least one, right? Or has Dr. Wright? Framed one yet? You frame one with me. Hmm. Okay. Well, you guys can keep going if you wish to do more day phase. You may. If anybody else has any ideas for a scene. Um, um. I, I actually kind of do, but did you have something as well? I was just wondering if uh, I, I don't, but I was wondering if uh, Mr. Burns would have time somewhere in this day phase to look at the book, or if that's going to be a something for later. But that's just throwing something up in the air. If you have something active, please go ahead. I mean, I, you were you were probably angling for like letting Mr. Burns have the glory of figuring out there's a changeling situation going on, right? Um, I mean, Mr. Burns might maybe do a solid and frame that scene up with someone to reveal <laughs> he's figured it out, right? So. so, is there? Do we have like PC VPC moves, um, like sort of like spending a string, aside from the the opposite of a collie move? Uh, not well. What are you trying to accomplish? I suppose is the bigger question. Like, like I wanted to get answers, but I wasn't. I wasn't sure what I could have done to get answers. Right. Yeah. You have because you have to wait for it to be framed on you, right? Um, or you have to wait for the colleague move to trigger to where you are the the not when when you are not the scene framer. Um, I suppose. I mean, apart from just like role playing it out. Uh, at this point, no. Um, okay. You can frame up a scene and try to like just get them to divulge it, <laughs> or you That's... can conduct, or you can conduct your own daytime investigation to try to figure out the truth of the matter. Right? So. Okay. Yeah, I think I might do that then. I'm gonna go to where that house used to be. Ah, uh, good. Last yeah. night. I love it. That's a great scene, actually. Um, you can be there. Um, I think when you get there, I think there was there will still be like, um, you know, I suppose they probably have like like it's all kind of like boarded up so that like dumb kids can't get in there and hurt themselves or whatever, right? Like that's all going on, and um, and there's a cordon in, you know around it so no one can kind of walk by it, right? Um, and as you as you you get dropped off in the handsome cab, Doctor. Right? You'll see. There's a young man, um, a young man. Like uh, I think it's kind of a brisk morning or a brisk afternoon. There's a young man standing in front of the house, um, wearing a pea coat, um, kind of shaggy hair, and he seems to be just like staring at it. Like we don't know why, but as if remembering something. What do you do? I'm going up to the house. Are there any bobbies there, or? Uh, no, I think no. I think enough time has passed. Like whenever this happened, like to. I mean, it was a fire. They got it under control, and now it's just uh, you know, it's, no one's okay. Really, they're kind of just leaving. Like at this moment, no, there's nothing going on. Okay, I'm going to go up to basically where he's standing and stand beside him, uh, and also study the house, <laughs> the mm -hmm. remains of the house. He he says, he doesn't turn to look at you, but he says, 
This was the house I grew up in. How old does he look? Yeah, Youngish, 20s, 25. Yeah. Are you the owner of this house? No, no. My parents were. Are, I suppose. They are most distraught. Are you the lost child? He turns and you see his violet eyes. And he says, I've come home, no worries. Huh. Mm. Have I seen people with purple eyes before? It's unusual. I mean, it, 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 I mean, you might be maybe it, you could maybe chalk it up to a trick of the light, but no, it's definitely strange. What do you know of hearts? <laughs> no, okay. Sure, I'll, I'll ask. That. Uh, what do you ask him? What do you know of hearts? children's hearts and he smiles and says you are a very very formidable person it would seem you are not the first elder of your kind to visit me in recent days when was the other visit the very night that my ancestral home went up in flames. Do you know who did it? This is, I'd be happy to tell you everything I know. But first, you have to make me a promise. Of? I have a room down by the docks. Temporary lodging until we get this all sorted out. You will visit me on three consecutive nights and let me, let us experience one another. Um, okay, I, I, okay, the camera focuses on Ventidius's hand on his cane, and you see a titan, and there's just like a look of like anger and humiliation <laughs> on his face. He's getting proposition again. <laughs> um, and he like turns to look because i think like he glanced over and saw like the face purple eyes and then like turned back to look at the house because they're both dramatic um as they're talking but like at this point he like turns around and like looks like he's about to punch the fae uh do you <laughs> or do you just look like you are i think it's like just looking like it's about to do it. I think I want you to, re I think I want a composure here. Uh, what are you afraid will happen if you fail this composure rule? If you want to keep mm. it cool to not punch him, I should say. What am I afraid of? Um, I'm afraid I might kill him before uh, finding out what I want to find out. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, plus composure. Okay. Six. So that's an eight. I think you keep it together. Now let's read it. 
uh, I have to tell you. I think I have the day move. I have to tell you how your actions would leave you vulnerable. And you could use to back down and go through with it. If you <clears throat> if you keep it together and don't like if you don't punch him, if you don't like if you don't just like walk away from the situation right now, I think I think you will have a condition where uh, you become kind of smitten with this guy, with this fairy. Um. Hmm. Maybe I'll Janus mask it. Ah. Huh? <laughs> past or future? Or I guess past is the only one that makes sense for the mother. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. I'll Janus mask it. Um. And then so I look. I have like a raised fist. Well, actually. Yeah, I, I look like I'm about to strike him with my cane. I, I, think, I, I just... think, yeah, I think he will like, I think as your bonus, like if you if you do Janice Mask, it'll make it a 12 plus. I think you'll not only keep your cool, but you'll send the message that you're not to be trifled with. And he'll just kind of like give you, he'll just tell you whatever you want to know. So. Oh, all right. But how does it oh. look? Like, how does he know you're like all business? Um. How... Oh. I think at that moment, I look actually really angry um, and just completely insulted. And maybe it's one of those things where he has, he's always gotten like, that he usually gets away with like these kind of propositions or whatever. Um, and it's just that the, the fact that at that moment, I looked so like not swayed at all mm. that, um, that it made a that that's what like was like oh so it's like his whatever kind of power he usually has on people is like not there at that moment yeah oh i see like he's not like swaying you yeah and i think he says mm, it's all right friend i can tell you're not the type who likes to engage in transactions <sighs> an elderly gentleman I didn't catch the name, came by last night, and he set this home on fire. What did you tell him? I told him everything. I told him everything. I told him that I am but a foot soldier, a courtier, if you will, of one who is entering this world because something is going on very interesting in London, something that is very big. Me and my kind are being placed all over the city so that we might gain a foothold here. You know the elderly gentleman, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. How do I, how do I speak with your king? Your friend didn't tell you any of this? No, he did not. And you will now, won't you? You'll hear from him in due time. I would like a way to contact him. Well, in that case, <sighs> you have a very assertive manner about you, sir. And I would certainly not want to be accused of treason by my king. But I happen to know for a fact he is going to be at the home of a one Joanna Wembley tonight for a bit of a party. I nod and um, also at this moment 
I take it like a step closer to him. What would you give me for your eyes? And what would he give you for your eyes? Or what would you take? What would he take from you for his eyes? Yeah. And he gets a very like a nervous laugh, right? Like <laughs> you are very interesting, sir. And I regret to report very, very unnerving. Have a nice afternoon. And he turns and walks off. Yeah, I think I like lean back a little disappointed. <laughs> okay. Cool with that scene. Good. Any other day scenes? Um, I, I, I do think I'll, I'll bring the, uh, the Faye thing forward to people. Maybe like everyone's gathered in the, for tea or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, sounds good. We'll have that scene. Um, yeah, I, I think we're, we're there at the table for tea and, uh, Theo will say, so uh, I know Marcus has been disturbed by this whole child thing, the missing babies. And well, I was been doing some investigation into it and I was in the library and this book, I just happened upon it. Um, but here, look, it's uh, it talks about something very similar. This is this is the creature. I think that I saw this is what crawled out and stole babies from under the night. Cribs and hearts and dirt and fey things. Oh my gracious. <laughs> Sounds like a hunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yes, the fey king, I was told, will be at Joanna Wimberley's party. This evening. Well, you, you were told, Dr. Wright. What yes. an interesting thing to have not brought up. Just now, when I returned for tea. Before I returned for tea. By whom? The Fae Child. The, the Changeling. But there's a... You talked to one of these? Yes, the house was burned down by... I glance at Elvian, but I don't say. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very dangerous, Dr. Wright. And there may be a couple of layers on top of that statement. Yes, but it can be so informative to return to the scene of crime, don't you find, Dr. Wright? Yes. Glaring. Ooh, double meaning. Yeah, that's good. Shall we to the party? <laughs> well, I thought it was rather bigger news, the Fae invading London, stealing children. I'm not sure what they intend, but I was told, and at this I like, give another look at Elvian, that they are here because something big is happening. Then they, we, we should... Definitely try to stop it. Yes. I do often feel like the entirety of London is preparing for a party that we haven't been told about. And yet are still expected to attend. If we are not invited, then I suppose we should invite ourselves. Shouldn't we, Miss White? Yes. <laughs> I can think of something snappy to say. Maisie just cocks one of her guns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh.
Yeah, maybe she even does have, like, her pistol on the counter and she's, like, munching on a cucumber sandwich or whatever people have. It's the only <laughs> English thing I know, basically. <laughs> um, as we finish and break up, I will move over to, uh, <laughs> equivalent food, uh, uh, to Dr. Wright and say you should be very careful Dr. Wright the Fae are quite dangerous yes I, I see you took quite a lot of caution Apparently unless it was for not he was not dead though and I at this point I like contrary to my usual cold demeanor I suddenly seem to animate a little and I like I don't touch you, but I, like, guide you to the side a bit so we're, like, further away from everyone else. Do you think it's possible for me to trade for his eyes? You've dealt with them before. Doctor, some things have prices that are too high. I suggest you put this from your mind. Why would you wish these creatures' eyes? You're a good man, Albion. And I, my demeanor is back to normal. All right. Well, so I think that was maybe like the people, there's like a scene within a scene, like two scenes that are going on. Uh, in the first case, I think you would definitely get credit for number four there, uh, Mr. Burns, on the DCs. And, yeah. And in the second case, I think probably you should mark that one as well, Dr. Wright, since I'm going to say you kind of framed up the moving even further away and kind of like made the interaction a little more pointed with, with Marcus. Um, yeah, so Dr. Wright, if we're mark number four. And yeah. Sounds like we're going to the night phase. Cool. Uh, why don't we take a five minute break? Come back. We'll do that.
I like Ventidious the session. He's fun. Yeah. I think my favorite is still the boy. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go around the table and ask you what you're each going to be doing tonight during the night phase. And we'll start with Mr. Theo Burns. Um, didn't we have a party to go to or something? Okay. Ms. White. Party! Dr. Wright. Yeah, a party. Do it up. <laughs> Marcus Albion. It would seem as though the party is in order. <laughs> Indeed. Do you wish to spend any assets? You're on your last resource <laughs> for our grave house. I, I'd rather us go armed. I'll, I will highly recommend that. Do I always have my gun regardless? You always have your gun. Yeah. Right. yeah. So you guys do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's do, let's do, do that. Um, because I'll, I'll, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, when I should have, instead of taking that body part, I should have. But I'll do it next time. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll make sure we have at least one. <laughs> All right. So you guys can have, um, you can have like weapons appropriate for like Fey killing too, right? Like they, they, they can be like real specific weapons, right? If you intend to kill the Fey King or the Fey Prince or whoever they are mm -hmm. um, tonight, you may do that cold iron sort of things yeah, and yeah. I can use the ghost of Hargrave house to mm -hmm. uh, make sure we have either plenty or that very specific I su suppose yeah yeah I think maybe like um, the way we can kind of do ghost of Hargrave house is um, maybe we'll just say that you have like you can have like fey hunting weapons plus like regular weapons so <laughs> cool that sounds good Oh, also, does anyone have any physical conditions? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Yeah, I think everyone's just like shocked, angry, or unnerved, or terrified. Okay, cool. <sighs> Still tainted. <laughs> tainted. Tainted, tainted. Let's go to the overscenes. I think uh, for time purposes, I think we'll do one overscene and one, and then one like. We'll just do one pass for the night phase. Then we'll cut to do um, Dr. Wright's Janus mask. And then uh, and then I have a little uh, a little coda scene to do. All right. And this time, I think the last one on this in this collection is the uh, is the play, right? A Night at the Grand Guignol, the Baker's Son. Or did we do that one already? I can't remember. I don't think we did that one. Uh, we haven't done that one yet. Yeah. Every class of people in London is represented in the audience at the Theatre Grand Guignol this night. They have come to watch the newest production, The Baker's Son, a story filled with romance, heartbreak, and lots and lots of blood. The first is we paint the scene. As the limelights pop to life and the crimson curtain is raised, what do we see as our eyes scan the stage that let us know this is the story of a humble baker's son? Uh, maybe it has like a prop with the, um, which we call it, the sign postings. And I don't know what those are because I haven't been to London, but it's located in like a very, um, like a neighborhood that is uh, not so well to do. Yeah, sketchy neighborhood. Mm. Cool. I yes. think we, oh. oh, go ahead. That's okay, go ahead. I, I think we see as, you know, the curtain's risen and as he steps out, he's, in patches and you know very obviously poorly dressed and we could see his hair all you know uncut matted looking underneath his hat yeah and um 
uh, I think he is kneeling um, on the ground with uh, the spotlight just on him. And he is praying. When you hear what he's praying for, it's for uh, it's for the drought to end, so that they can, I don't know, have wheat, have flour. Have wheat. <laughs> I don't know, some food related thing with drought and a baker. But the important thing is he's kneeling and praying about it. Yeah. Um. And I think uh, as they're as they're going about their work for the day, um, you know, he, the the son is tasked with like cleaning off the bench and getting everything uh, ready. And as he like brushes it down, there's these like clouds of uh, um, flour that come sort of up into the air and catch the light. Uh, and as as it gets peeled away, like the the table and everything, they're they're obviously like dirty and sort of rotted and stained in ways that you couldn't see when it was covered by the layer. Indeed. You are at the townhouse of Joanna Wemberley. You've been there before. And there are there are a lot of people there, actually. Um, you see lots of men and women. Uh, the men are in like tuxes uh, and tails, or you know, or, or, you know, tops and tails, or whatever the saying is. They look good, and the women are like, you know, uh, you know, are wearing like very elegant velvet, you know, gowns um, and ornamentation in their hair. And you hear music on the inside, and. Um, and people are kind of like, you know, kind of like streaming in, like casually, you know, as you as you get there. You don't have an invitation point of order, but um, nevertheless, I suppose you can handle that when you get there. Uh, as you all like step out of the carriage that you've hired, because it's you know it's a whole group of you, a whole gaggle of you. What um, what do you look like as you step out of the carriage? Um, so Mr. Burns is in Tales of a Manor, but it's, uh, like a crimson red silk, uh, jacket that he has on. It's embroidered and patterned, uh, and instead of, like, the, the white dress shirt, it's just all black underneath. Uh, and then he has, uh, black pants that have, like, silver, em silver embroidery running down the, the sides of them. Nice. What about you, Maisie? I'm in a like a yellow cyan dress, and it's like quite close. I've modified it so it's not all frumpy and stuff. Because the last time I went to the opera, I hated that. It was all cascading everywhere, and I couldn't move about freely and stuff. So maybe it's a little strange that she's made it um, like altered that whatever it's called when you put it around her waist to frame the, the frumpy part. She's altered that part. Um, and maybe has like one of those cool side little hats on. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. I think that uh, Marcus figuring it would be inappropriate to dress in his usual uniform. I think we probably see him dressed in one of those fine pieces of clothes that he moved aside when he was in his chest. And it's probably a bit of an out of date, you know, t tales and, and all. And it has that look of age. The shirt has, has yellowed a bit. Uh, and it's, um, it fits him, but you can tell it was cut and it was cut immaculately. It is a beautiful set of clothes, but it was cut for a man of a bigger chest and a little less of a paunch doesn't quite fit him. Mm -hmm. What about you, Dr. Wright? Uh, I'm dressed in my everyday outfit. Um, I think I probably have two pairs, a pair. Yeah, so I can wear them alternating like whenever two I sets, wash one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's exactly the same. It's a little faded at the, It's it's immaculately like uh ironed and like 
it looks like because you know Albion is great, um, uh, but it just it it looks old <laughs> and it's out of style. And I it's like the stereotype of that English gentleman who will be very boring at parties. That's what I look like. Yeah, good. I like it. As you all approach the, you know, the like you're kind of like walking, you know, walking up. Um, I think you, uh, I think, I think maybe there's like a moment where like you are, you know, supposed to show some kind of invitation, but you know, you, you don't have anything, but it doesn't really matter because I think Joanna, her face newly unwrapped, um, sees you from the inside. She's wearing like a very, a very fine purple velvet gown and she says, no, it's quite all right. Please let them enter. And you can all come in. Uh, the the whole lower floor has been kind of like repurposed as a sort of ballroom, right? And you uh, you all come in, and she walks up to you, Maisie, and she says, "Miss White, how wonderful to see you again." in much better circumstances, I see. Yes, I, I heal quickly, as it turns out. Mm. <sighs> Are you armed this evening? I am always capable. Hmm. Well, since we've let bygones be bygones, we are no longer at war with each other. I wonder if you might come into the powder room, just us girls, so we can chat. By all means. As you can see, I have um, put in a lot of effort already. And she like, you know, because she's wearing a dress and the hat and everything. Yeah, yeah, this is the thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> she takes you by the hand. I think you have gloves on, right? Mm -hmm. She takes you by the hand. And she says, I'm happy to see this one hasn't gotten the better of you. No one will get the better of me, I assure you. Hmm. All right, then. And she looks to the other three of you and says, please enjoy the party. And she takes you to the powder room. I think there's a few people in there and she kind of like tells them the GTFO until it's just the two of you. And she says, I have to confess, Miss White. I don't like seeing you like this. Like what? You like don't think? This. She takes that ridiculous hat off, right? <sighs> <laughs> okay. And she kind of like undoes all the stuff so your hair falls down. And she says, <clears throat> No, 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 no. None of this will do at all, my dear. And she says, Sit. There's like a little chair. She invites you to sit. <laughs> do you sit? Sure. Yeah. Is it like. Is the tone? Uh... It's not menacing or dark. No. Okay, it's, yeah, it's definitely it's... like weird, but it's not like. She right, sits you down. and and it might even be, because the last time she got so close, I like uh, literally shot her in the face. So, right. I think I can be nice this time. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I sit down. And you're at peace. She is not a threat. Uh, right. She's not a named threat anymore. Right. And you hear behind you the, the metal on metal of shears. Well, she's going to give me a haircut? She's cutting your hair. Is it really short? She's cutting it pretty <laughs> short. <laughs> uh, I think I like Ted's up and say, uh, I can't say that I prefer my hair short. She's like, Trust me, 
I'm very good with my hands. You're going to love it. I suppose since you've started, I have no choice. And she gives you a haircut. Better be nice. <laughs> What's everyone else doing? Just go around the table, find out what you're all doing here at the beginning of the party. This is kind of an extended first pass, I guess, since we're not doing one. We're only doing the one. Uh, what about you, Mr. Burns? Um, so, uh, I think we've worked our way in some, and there's like a, uh, there's a room that has a, a like, statuary and an alcove. Uh, it's, uh, I think, like a, a boy, like a cherub, kneeling and praying, but they're, like, carved in the stone. There are tears running down his face. Uh, and I think I've pulled Dr. Wright aside. I'll say, so, fairies, fairy kings, that's, that's what we do now. That's what you're bringing to the table. I thought you at least would have argued against such nonsense. Is it absurd to you? <laughs> After you destroyed the heart? I just... You didn't strike me as the type to believe in fairy tales. Tell me, Mr. Burns. Did we not strike a truce with vampires in the city? And I suppose you struck a blow against what? Serial killers in our midst? Corpse defilers? Do you care to find the fake king, Mr. Burns? Is that your concern? If it is uh, not, that is all right. But I am afraid I will have to wander off by my own then. I ha would have thought that we could use your far more superb verbal capabilities. No, you're right, of course. There are many, many dangerous things at this party. We should keep our eye on them. Come, let's go find some others. Marcus, what are you up to? I think I'm all business. And uh, as they were moving off, I would have given, try to let us all know if you see one of these beings. Uh, I, I would guess they will be hidden, but uh, there's always a tell. And I will begin as I moved away from them, I'm, I'm circling through and uh, I think I probably am, have taken just a, just like a, a bar, little bar of cold uh, iron. And I'm just like rubbing it in my hands as I'm walking through this crowd, looking especially towards their eyes. We'll pick up that next session. Okay. Uh, Dr. Wright, I think you're the only person who has Janice Mask Mark. Would you read that, please, and, narrate, and do whatever it says? Yes. Uh, let's see. Narrate a flashback to the time you had a terrible fight with a person you lost. Mm. You hear a crash of broken glass. And actually not broken glass, broken china. So, And you see on the ground, it's just a cup. And there's tea seeping from it into the floorboards and the floorboard it's painted very nicely and there's rugs all around it is clearly no longer at uh the boarding school or yeah you, you cannot go and you see uh ventidius now like a young man like in his 20s early 20s you can't stop me and then you see also Anthony uh, in his early 20s and 
he has like two suitcases and it looks like he's about to go out the door. She's sick. What is the point of marrying her if she's going to die within a year even? Um, and like on Antony's face, there's just this look of disappointment. And also it's almost like pity he's like laughing at um ventidius a little bit oh ventidius you don't understand you don't understand love you've never been able to love and i don't expect you will now and then he strides out the door and slams it behind him Nice. Let's close with the enemy. So at Joanna's party, we hear the music playing. Maybe some people are even dancing. And the camera kind of moves past the party, deeper into the house, up a flight of stairs, into a room. And the perspective is fixed on, directly, on Admiral Thaddeus Ferguson, sitting in a chair, talking to someone can't tell who it is because it's like he's talking to us right like we're that person like in the perspective but he's talking to someone he looks casual he's in his you know dress uniform but clearly having a drink enjoying himself and he says i ever told you about the shipwreck Yes, shipwreck many years ago when I was a young officer. I was the only person to survive. Most of my shipmates drowned and later succumbed to disease and hunger on the open seas, on makeshift rafts. But I lived. I lived. And I made my way to an island. If you asked me to point it out on a map today, I wouldn't be able to. But on this island, there was a cave. Dark. The sun didn't even seem to penetrate the darkness. But I knew there would be respite inside. Cooler, you know. And so I went to it. I stepped inside, found fresh water, which was a mercy. And I stayed there for some time, days. And something from inside that cave began to call to me, something from the deepest parts of it the darkest parts of it. I answered the call. Whatever it was, it wanted me to see something. It wanted to show me something. It wanted to show me why I was spared. And so I went. 
and I saw someone. I saw you, and I knew you were my purpose. And the camera at that point swoops around to show the little boy, Joanna's grandson. That's it, scene. So good. Oh, hell yeah. Gotta love this. Love. All right, well, let's do end of session questions. Oh, uh, man. We'll start with Marcus. <laughs> Damn, that was good. Um, well, I, I got my uh, overseeing in, so mark that, and uh, told me to do something crazy, insane, bullshitty, uh, and, I, and I do it as a serpent. I don't think I hit that. Mm. Um, but did you ensure someone else got credit for your triumphs? Yes, you did do that. You yeah. managed to do that. And I don't know. Have, you have not resolved the threat. No. No, that it wasn't resolving the face taker in that no. sense. No. no okay. Which is still a problem. No. Yeah. <laughs> because cool. it, mainly, I think that missed role implied that, like, she may be hunting one of you to put your face on Antilius's <laughs> baby. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That would be a horrifying thing to come back to the shop to. <laughs> yeah. I advanced. Cool. Uh, what about you, Mr. Burns? Uh, let's see. Did you have a face to face encounter with a dark entity? Uh, you did. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm quite good at that. <laughs> yes. uh, did, you in, uh, did you counsel someone using your supernatural affinities as the basis for that advice? Mm, I think. So I'm trying to remember. What do you think? And there's the stuff with the the Fey still. Uh, yeah. Spreading that out to the uh, the rest of the group. Yeah, but I don't, that wasn't really like your dark affinities. That was a page that Marcus <laughs> opened up to you, a book that you put on your on your on your, on your stand, and and Ventidius already knew all about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Ms. White? Did you stick out in London society for all the wrong reasons? I don't think so. Did you? No, this time I, I went against that. I, I dressed yeah, a little. Yeah, you did. All you good. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. um, did you use violence to solve a problem? Was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was gonna. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Ventidius? Did you shoot? Oh, wait. Yeah. Did you shoot down an idea? because it wasn't rooted in science or reason? No. no the opposite of that, actually, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I ever... Yeah, I know, you haven't done that one. Yeah, that's not really, that one's not really playing so far. No. Did you secretly really engage in romantic or emotional behavior at, at odds with your cold, logical exterior? Yes. In the flashback, for sure, yeah. Yeah, and also, like, uh, the part when I was trying to give my scarf. Oh, it was uh, yeah. definitely rebuffed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Oh, were you trying? Uh, and that was that a scene where you were trying to also hit the um, Mr. Burns's feelings? Like you can't bring yourself to admit it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was, but it wasn't like it was still nighttime. I think night phase. Oh, it was night phase. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. It's good though. I think it helped. I think it. I didn't pick up on it myself, so that's why I was asking. Kind of. Uh, cool. Uh, great. All right. Well, that was awesome. Uh, we are good to go. I uh, thank you all so much for another lovely playtest, and I'm going to stop this.